Welcome to the COI 16 session about uh, youth climate action reporting and action for climate empowerment challenges mapping. <coughs> My name is Miroslav Polzer. I'm with the International Association for the Advancement of Innovative Approaches to Global Challenges. It's a UNFCCC accredited civil society organization based in Klagenfurt in Austria. And we are doing this session, organizing this session together with Equanet, the digital innovation partner of this COI 16. And uh, the primary aims of this uh, today's workshop are first uh, to present uh, this database uh, and uh, the climate action reporting as a systemic necessity for su successful youth engagement in climate action and action for climate empowerment in general and formation of a youth climate action reporting consortium. And uh, in this context, we will present you the global youth engagement network initiated by Equanet. This will be done by the CEO of uh, Equanet, Joel Messan, and uh, we will present you the ACAT project within the UNFCCC program where we are uh, working with Austrian government and the UN Climate Change Secretary on innovative ways for non-state actors engagement or of society engagement in climate action and we will show you how we are going to resource on uh, to mobilize on a large scale resources for youth climate action and uh, then explain you also how uh, this uh, is uh, requiring a, a methodological framework and shared standards for youth climate action reporting. And uh, then we are also delighted to have uh, Jess Jessica Huntingford with us, uh, who will present uh, the Loretta EU project and uh, how in a concrete setting uh, this kind of uh, work that we are discussing today, youth climate action reporting, is needed so that youth engagement is effective and that it can influence the decision making and the governance on the city level regarding climate action and transition to low carbon societies. So, uh, the speakers are uh, Joel Messan, uh, CEO of Equinet, John Crawley. Uh, I can't see them yet uh, on the Zoom uh, platform, but uh, they are supposed uh, to join in a minute. Jessica Huntingford, uh, Loretta EU Project uh, from Resolvo, and uh, my, myself, Miroslav Polzer, and Timothy Damon, uh, Global Youth Development Institute from Ohio. He is a former uh, younger focal point uh, and also a partner of our initiatives since uh, COP22 in Marrakesh. We have started a cooperation on large-scale resource mobilization for youth climate action and uh, in this context he will present also uh, what uh, he is working on and how it connects uh, with our topics. So the challenge uh, that uh, we are addressing today is that uh, uh, for, the, for a long time, this uh, uh, United Nations efforts, uh, global efforts for uh, climate action, have been the domain of national governments. And uh, people thought, I don't need to care, it will be handled by my government and the, the other governments in the context of the United Nations. But since Paris uh, Agreement, since COP21, 2015, there's a paradigm shift and it becomes more and more clear that only if all of society is engaged in climate action, then uh, it will be really possible to achieve uh, the goals of the Paris Agreement and uh, otherwise... Uh, and so there's a, a significant shift in the importance and recognition of non-state actors and we have in the Paris Agreement the paragraph 118, which says, uh, 117, that the parties welcome the efforts of non-party stakeholders, that means everyone, and for instance also youth, to scale up their climate actions and encourage the registrations of those actions in the non-state actor zone for climate action platform. And uh, this, uh, you see on this slide, uh, there the screenshot from that platform, 
and you see there are entry points for cities, for regions, companies, investors, organizations, but the individual concerned citizen who wants to drive his uh, carbon footprint down and uh, takes ambitious climate action has no place to document this, to put this on the global map. And this uh, deficiency has been addressed already by the ACE Youth Forum 2018. Uh, uh, there's also a video that uh, I have in my slides, uh, I might share it later with you, uh, where several young people have said, we are doing great things, we want to have recognition for what we are doing, but uh, we cannot do it alone, we need a global platform, we need a global methodology to document what we are doing, and Patricia Espinosa at that time said, uh, yes, she understands the need for this and she will work on it, but for the time being it uh, did not happen, and also uh, campaigns like the net uh, uh, race to zero campaign, uh, which is inviting broader society to uh, take ambitious action. There is no uh, entry point for the individual or for a young person to say, yes, I have my uh, ambitious climate uh, goals and I want to uh, share these, my plans uh, with uh, global society. So, uh, and, um, so it's a, a systemic need. And, uh, uh, also, we are working on this uh, with several partners, for instance, also with the Climate Change Coalition and uh, with those who will speak with us today. And uh, we are setting up now uh, Youth Time and Action with the Reporting Consortium. And uh, uh, the, this uh, group of people, group of institutions working on this, has the aim to develop a reporting framework with taxonomies, ontologies, date, uh, data and metadata architecture, impact assessment framework, and then developing the digital tools, uh, blockchain-based youth climate action reporting platform, digital measurement reporting and verification of climate action, intellectual property management framework, and individual climate action dashboard apps, and uh, in partnership with the UNFCCC, then having also the possibility to report uh, from the individual and from the, an individual uh, climate action dashboard app uh, towards the global platform. And uh, we have also a cooperation with UN Environment. There's uh, the UN Environment and UN Habitat have a very well elaborated platform for citizen engagement in the world environment situation room. I uh, encourage everyone to uh, look it up uh, and uh, they have a special focus now on youth engagement in getting information about what is going on in the world regarding the climate crisis and uh, again there is a need for having shared methodology and shared standards for data collection. And. Uh, just briefly, before I go to Jessica, I would like to show you some information about the, our connections to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. There, the, the governance space for engaging all of society, the non-state actors and especially youth, is Action for Climate Empowerment. And at the COP26, in the next two weeks there will be a decision taken about the future of ACE and to develop uh, new ideas uh, for this uh, process. Uh, the Austrian government has initi initiated the ACE AT project in which my organization and several other, uh, several other pro uh, partners are involved and uh, in this we have the task to uh, develop ideas for a global support structure for uh, non-state actors, action for climate empowerment, and resource mobilization innovation, uh, where we will also, we've presented this uh, on the 20th of October in a workshop of the UNFCCC about uh, financial support for action for climate empowerment, and uh, the uh, idea is to have uh, everyone's uh, hands on everyone's mobile device, an individual climate action dashboard app based on digital collectibles, NFTs, and uh, having a global uh, support structure, a United Citizens Organization for Action for Climate Empowerment. And uh, we aim to mobilize in the coming 
years, really several million uh, of uh, euros uh, for youth climate action. And in order to justify or really having uh, this evidence-based uh, reward uh, mechanism, we need data, we, and for this we are here. To hear also from you what uh, you are aware of, who is doing what, uh, do you have certain competences or already solutions in this field. And um, welcome once again on behalf of my organization and our partners. And uh, I would uh, give now the floor to Jessica. I will stop uh, my screen share and ask Jessica to uh, uh, share your experience, your views on how this kind of work can help also with uh, initiatives and projects that you are doing with uh, cities and other partners. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Miroslav. Can you hear me okay? Yes, perfect. Okay, then, hi, good afternoon. It's lovely to be here. Um, so, my name is Jessica. I work for a company called Dissolvo, which is based in Florence, in Italy. And our, our main work is um, developing and running projects that are to do with improving local and regional policy and particularly in the field of sustainable and responsible development. Um, I actually met um, uh, Miroslav and, 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 and got to know about this initiative quite recently because we were uh, lucky enough to have them involved in a project proposal that we were preparing for funding um, from the European Union Research and Innovation Programme. Um, and what I would like to do today is just tell you a little bit about that proposal and maybe a little bit about you know where we see um, some key points for the future about youth reporting, not just in that proposal, but you know in in in, in other work with local and regional authorities. So um, the Loretta proposal is at the moment just a proposal because we literally just submitted it a couple of weeks ago, so we don't know if it's going to get funded or not. We hope so, but. Um, even if it doesn't, we're going to take this forward. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about what it does. Um, Loretta stands for Local and Responsible Trust-Based Just Transition. So we're looking at how um, climate adaptation, how the transition towards a more sustainable economy can be done in a way that is um, equal and that doesn't, let's say, uh, impact negatively on some more vulnerable groups of society. So we know that the European Green Deal has put this, you know, has integrated the concept that's already in the sustainable development goals of, of leaving no one behind. And you know that is a risk when you're investing in, in energy transition and climate change transition. It's a risk that some of the more vulnerable groups of society will have to um, you know, take on a, a larger share than necessary of some of the negative economic and social impacts. So our project proposal is, is a research proposal where we'll be looking at what might be some of the barriers to this just transition and how we can overcome them. But it's not a standard academic research proposal, it's a, a, a proposal that's based around citizen engagement. So in line with what Miroslav was saying before about this multi-stakeholder engagement, our idea is to go down to local level to see how we can work with local governments but also with the citizens in the local areas to try and make sure that any measures that they're putting into place have taken into consideration the needs of various different vulnerable groups. And we look at different types of climate transition measures but we look particularly at buildings, um, so you know, energy use in buildings, we look at waste management, uh, we look at transport and how the move towards sustainable transport should be managed, and we look at questions related to the, um, the production and use of energy. Um, so how does this fit into what Miroslav was saying before about youth reporting? Um, our proposal is that after a phase of uh, research at European level, we're going to be working at, in five pilot actions. Throughout the project, at the beginning of the project, we will select five local authorities who will commit to working with us to try and make sure that their local sustainability policies are uh, designed and implemented in a way that respects the principles of just transition. 
So we'll be trying to engage lots of different social groups because, you know, our local city is made up of different needs, different people with different needs, people with different uh, priorities. And one of the groups that we want to involve to try and really, you know, boost this and put some dynamism is, is youth. We want to see what the youth in the local areas are seeing. How can they help us to, to go out and find out what might be the problems um, and what might be some solutions? And so together with, with Miro's lab, we suggest in this proposal that the youth reporting and the challenge mapping can be tested at local level and I would suggest perhaps even at neighbourhood level so that the youth would be working together with the groups um, around them in their neighbourhood and finding out, you know, uh, you know, what are you, you know, what are your worries about climate transition when you're looking at mobility, when you're looking about um, heating your home in the winter, and, and and how we can move towards sustainability without impacting negatively on you, on your income, on your on your social and economic status. So the idea is that within this proposal, initially in these five pilot cities, we'll be testing this challenge mapping that uh, that Miroslav mentioned, and. One other important point that I wanted to say was, you know, I said at the beginning, and I've said a number of times, we work with local government. So our idea is that the local government is really the level where those that kind of input um, from youth reporting can make a difference because we're close to the citizens. The local politician has to be listening to what the citizens are seeing. They have to be sure that they're listening. Um, you know, that's that's the people that vote for them. It's directly. We've got the chance to talk to them directly. And they've got the chance to try and incorporate some of their the ideas that come up from the ground up. So our you know our pilot areas will really be a local a local government that has committed to listening to what the, the different groups will say, including the youth reporting, and seeing how they can integrate that into their local policy. So that is what we hope Loretta will do. Um, I will be hearing about whether it's been financed in a few months. And in the meantime, you know. We work on a lot of different programs that uh, that boost cooperation among local authorities across different areas of Europe. So you know the the, the opportunity to try and test out um, use reporting and challenge mapping systems like um, like the one we're talking about today. You know there really are a lot of opportunities for that kind of testing to see how they can work, to see how how they can be adapted to different local situations. So that's how you know we would like to be involved um, and keep you know working together uh, on, 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 on this important uh, topic. So I'll stop there, I'll hand back to Miroslav and I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Okay. Thank you very much, Jessica. It's really uh, this applied level which shows uh, how important this topic today is. And I would suggest that we already start uh, with uh, the audience, uh, where whether you have thoughts on this, and uh, then uh, later we can explain in a little bit more depth also how this challenges mapping uh, can uh, be uh, a way to put local problems, uh, local challenges on the global map and connecting local action with global resources. And if I may give the floor to the audience, would somebody like to please? I would suggest if you could perhaps come here, then the camera sees you also, and then the virtual participants will see it as well. And if you could start with name and uh, which organization are you with, if you are with an organization. Uh, I guess it is. Can you hear him? Uh, you can uh, start. Test. Right, right, it works, it works. Okay, so my name is Ilyas, I'm from Ukraine and um, I'm in the mandate of both secretary with Friends for Future Ukraine. We are registering as a civil society association right now. And the first question is uh, in which regions uh, these projects can be applied? On what types of uh, maybe civil society communities or municipalities or regions on which levels and where yeah okay so there are two answers to this one is uh, the eu project uh, loretta and here uh, the partner cities have they been chosen already no they haven't been chosen yet what we have in the project is the 
um, the International uh, Organization of, of Local Cities for Sustainability, their European um, Secretariat. And the idea is that the cities will be selected during the project from their membership. Um, so that they'll really be working with the cities right from the start to explain about the project and about how it works. And, and then that, we're really choosing some cities that are committed to, to testing the, 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 you know, the proposals that come out of the project. So it will be um, in this particular case within the European Union member states because you know it, it's funded directly for, for that purpose. Um, but you know, ICLE has um, a global membership, as does UNESCO, who's the other another main partner in our project. So the idea is that while this would initially be tested in uh, five European uh, local councils, the European Union local councils, it would go beyond that, hopefully, as the, as the project progresses and as, as the initiative progresses. Yeah, thanks very much, Jessica. And uh, the other part of the answer is that uh, uh, through our GROCHA, uh, Global Changes Action Empowerment Mechanism and the United, Nation, uh, United Citizens Organization that we are going to uh, launch on the 10th of November here and for which uh, we, were, we have very ambitious uh, resource mobilization targets. On the 5th of June next year we are going to have uh, several uh, initiatives through which we will mobilize uh, financial resources for climate action of youth and other non-state actors. And uh, this is an open uh, mechanism where uh, youth groups or local communities will be also able to join uh, with their uh, as a governance partner, co-deciding where the, uh, the resources should flow to, but also by uh, uh, challenges mapping partner, where uh, people, organizations, youth uh, cities will say, these are in uh, our neighborhoods the challenges that we are uh, facing, which uh, we uh, want to address, uh, and we think they are of global uh, relevance, and for this we are inviting global community to partner in solving these challenges. And so we would be very welcome to stay connected uh, with our network, and then uh, when you see that uh, there are activities that uh, you would like to contribute or like to be engaged, also putting your local community on the global map uh, also as a re recipient and partner for global resources, then uh, you join it. Uh, it's uh, all we are doing is uh, hybrid, uh, in-person activities uh, in different parts of the world, but also a lot via internet. Uh, okay, I have uh, another question. It is, are the like if if uh, youth or the civil society or even the municipality gets to. Uh, find partners maybe in EU with, for example, there is uh, funding from uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Germany for this program. Uh, uh, civil society from Ukraine need to find uh, a partner organization in Germany who will be like mentoring. So, in the case of Ukraine or maybe all the Eastern Partnership countries uh, to the EU. Can these uh, municipalities or just civil society find by themselves uh, the fundings or just partnership and be a part of this program? Sure, sure. Uh, very welcome. If you find uh, ways and programs uh, which are synergetic, that's very welcome. Yes, uh, thank you. Because, that's uh, very good. In your brain, because uh, there are many projects, but uh, nobody may be in EU or in the world knows about them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There are really huge amounts of financial resources, and uh, for uh, these climate goals, this is a global challenge, and uh, it needs to be connected with uh, the global. Uh, challenge response mechanism. It needs to be connected with the UN and it cannot be uh, each uh, individual group, each city uh, uh, approaching the UN. But if you connect with our structure, with our information system, then you have the bridge to the United Nations 
information system on climate action. At least that's uh, the plan and the logic, and uh, we have a uh, very good, very, a lot of goodwill uh, on the side of uh, United Nations system. We are also next week at the uh, COP conference with a delegation of 20 people and having very many events there. And we are among the thematic leaders on citizens' uh, climate action reporting and uh, resource mobilization for this case. So very happy to, uh, to if you could come with your networks and your programs that we see how we can work together. Uh, thank you. We will see it. Uh, <laughs> If you can, please uh, share the information. Yes, and, uh, I can uh, share the screen again with my contact details. Uh, it was this one. Yeah, here. Share. Here you can see uh, my email address, uh, Twitter, and uh, several home pages uh, on uh, which we are uh, presenting our programs. Thank you. Yeah, it was very good to have you. Your name was again? Ilias. Ilias. Uh, pleasure meeting you, Ilias. <laughs> so, does somebody else have thoughts or comments? Please, please join us here in front. I'll try to make it fast. No, no, we have time. We have another 10 minutes, I would guess. And the, the speakers that we wanted to have, yes, the speakers that we had uh, planned uh, virtually, they have connection issues. It seems. Hello. So my name is Carlos. I'm from Honduras, yeah. and we're currently working on our national strategy for action for climate empowerment. Oh, really? Super. Yeah, we're trying to take a sample from Chile from Uruguay, yes. they've been working closely with the Spanish cooperation, yeah, and with the European Union. Super. So, at the moment, we are working also with them, but we haven't started that phase, right? So, my question would be, how important do you think it is challenge mapping as we are launching ACE, or ACE, as a national strategy, especially because uh, there are a lot of efforts coming from the European Union mm -hmm. and from the Spanish cooperation, to uh, for this for the public and private sector to be part of of, of launching the strategy, yes. because it is important to take into account the six com the six uh, complements that are part of the action for climate empowerment. Right, it, it's important to have education in the private and public sector. It's important also for there to be public awareness, public participation, and that's my main question. Like. How do you bring challenge mapping into ACE as a national strategy, especially for Honduras? Because it seems very important in Congress of, on all of your efforts, yeah. but uh, this is very innovative. Yeah. So it is important for Honduras to take into consideration the challenge mapping as we are one of the most vulnerable countries in the world. So yeah, that's my question. Wow. I'm delighted <laughs> that you are here because very often uh, people don't know about Action for Climate Empowerment program. And, uh, but it is such an important uh, field of uh, global climate action cooperation. And um, yeah, uh, it is, uh, we are trying to bring these uh, initiatives into the negotiations for the future of ACE document that we will get probably by the end of next week uh, and uh, partially um, it's uh, such that uh, in the national ACE strategies uh, countries can do whatever they want. They get some uh, guidance and uh, our intervention logic is that we will have a lot of financial resources and uh, only by concretely articulating the challenges and the action uh, theory of change and potential impact, then uh, there's a possibility and a chance that uh, those who hold the resources, that they are ready to channel it towards uh, this. So uh, we should uh, work together on uh, uh, bringing this kind of uh, logic into uh, your national ACE strategy and to be a pilot and then we'll be happy also to channel financial resources from our initiative the digital art for climate we hope that we will get at least one million uh, euros 
in June, and then we will have uh, a voluntary carbon footprint compensation crypto stamps, where we also think that within the next few years there could be tens of millions of euros, and uh, we, have, we will have an initial coin offering for this United Citizens Organization for ACE, and here again we will uh, be happy to to demonstrate with Honduras that uh, there are concrete action, data-based, uh, we can create impact if we work uh, from the global to the local level based on data and based on ACE challenges mapping. That's wonderful, perfect. Yeah. We will have to exchange cards and uh, sure. stay connected. And, and I have a following question here. Yes, please. Yeah. please. So, uh, you were mentioning also the articulation of the challenges, right? Yes. And it's very important to do so based on, on the data that we currently have. Yeah. So do you think in order for, you know, to accelerate the process, it's important to include ACE in, or ACE, sorry, I don't know, ACE. some people call it ACE, it's called other ACE. people call it ACE, but, uh, whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah. So do you believe uh, that including ACE in our uh, national determined contributions, such as Costa Rica has done, and like Costa Rica has developed just uh, one section, they have developed an entire section to the ACE, sec to the ACE factor. Do you think that will help you know, countries to understand this strategy better and to push you know, the funding for ACE and, yeah. and, and, and for example, your initiatives? Yeah, uh, yeah we have to uh, look into the details how we do it. And uh, the most important thing is uh, to say this ACE challenges mapping that it's not primarily a national effort. Okay. The national effort is provide the framework under which uh, people will understand uh, what ACE challenges mapping is, but that it's then happening more on the local level. But it can be multi-level ACE challenges mapping. It can be also identifying national challenges. But uh, I, my vision for this is that it will be a tool in the climate uh, change education. Mm -hmm. that, uh, uh, there will be a framework how to localize a challenge, how to see what the potential impact is and who are the stakeholders, what the intervention logic is and so And that uh, uh, young people, schools will go in their neighborhoods and say, oh, here we have an emission or here we have something if the sea level rises or whatever, okay. that it's exposed, we have risks here. So that uh, every school uh, could then do these challenges mapping and that people would then also based on the creativity and importance of the challenges that they are mapping get the rewards. They get uh, certain tokens also which they at a certain point can then exchange also for um, other services in their communities, for instance a restaurant giving them uh, pizza for free if they have done good challenges mapping. and. Um, yeah, so uh, it uh, should be for people a game even that they uh, there would be identified a challenge which has for for instance hundred units of uh, importance or a, a score value, and that uh, then there would uh, be individuals and uh, digital communities coming together to solve this to get this uh, score, uh, getting these points or these tokens. And it can be a nice game also, but uh, having it really connected with the national ACE strategy would be perfect, as I would be delighted sure. to work on this with you. Sure, well, thank you for your great answers. <laughs> thank you. Let me see. Um, any further questions or comments? Jessica, would you like to say also something? To conclude, more or less. Uh, I think there's one. There, there no, yeah, I, I, ah, okay, I, I, please. Uh, okay, we have one more here. Uh, yeah, Steve, you said. Yeah, Steve. <laughs> and then uh, to you, Jessica. Steve, please. Mm -hmm. um, uh, thank you uh, uh, for the presentation. And I thought a lot about the uh, sun. No? Uh, uh, Jessica, can you hear him? Uh, no, I, I couldn't hear. Okay. Uh, to the other microphone. You, you gotta turn it on. Hello. Turn it on. Hello. Yes. Hello. I think it worked. Let me help you out. That's great. 
this one was for you. Oh, shoot. Uh, so, um, yeah, I really appreciate the work and, and localizing uh, action. Uh, have you guys thought about uh, gamification uh, as, a, as a tool uh, to be able to uh, help uh, make these actions happen? Because uh, I, I made a metaverse, uh, Earth Defenders, where it teaches real world positive like agricultural skills, uh, how to grow plants and food, but also will be gearing players to get out into the local communities, um, and then also all the contributions inside the metaverse portions will go towards like planting trees and, and real action. So I've, I've always tried to think of gamifying uh, education towards positive actions and even have it be uh, these micro transactions, these passive transactions equate to positive uh, mm -hmm. thinking. So um, I'm just seeing if you guys have any gaming partners or would you be interested in working with the uh, Gaming groups. Uh, happy to uh, work with you on uh, this gamification. We have already uh, regarding gaming uh, a partner, but in a, a slightly different uh, area. It is um, there is a playing for good platform, uh, and uh, where uh, uh, players are invited to donate part of what they win to causes, and these causes need to be. Uh, impact data based, uh, so that's uh, what we are doing already. But uh, this metaverse uh, ecosystem and environment uh, thing, I'm happy to explore how we could uh, work on this together. Great, thank you. thanks. And now to you, Jessica, for the concluding <laughs> remarks. Okay, so well, first of all, you know, I'm sorry that I'm not there to conclude with you all because. Uh, it would be nice to be there in person, but um, I just, um, you know, even in this short session talking about this, some some some, some thoughts have, have come up, and obviously, you know, the question of you know the tool, the challenge mapping tool, is quite new. And even when we were talking about it in the proposal, we just that when we talked about what might be some of the challenges of applying this tool within our project, you know, the fact that it's innovative. Uh, that it's new was something that came up. I remember you said that, and that's why you know I think really um, getting started with testing it, going out into the pilot cities and testing it will be really, really interesting, and important to see how how you know how people use it. But then also from from my point of view, the reaction of the local authorities as well. You know how they how they react to it, how they accept it, how they select different challenges. Because I think you know that's important as well. You know. Should there be huge participation and a lot of challenges that are identified and developed, you know, how does a local authority take that and run with it and decide where to invest? How do they evaluate some of the, the suggestions that come out of the, the challenge market? So I think there's, you know, there's a lot of interesting work to be done there with, you know, the local authorities that are open to, to testing this. I also think it would be really interesting to see how to link up, you know, the, the youth participation with involving what is, you know, the main target of the Loretta proposal, which are vulnerable people. So people that, you know, wouldn't necessarily uh, be engaged in a discussion about climate action. And, um, you know, how can we, how can we really link up and link the question of, 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 of youth and the sort of passion and drive that, you know, youth have for climate action um, with, you know, the, with engaging with vulnerable people um, in their neighbourhoods and trying to sort of keep to meet a, a community around that. So you know that's that's kind of my let's say my hope for our goal in, in, in the next steps is is seeing in these local uh, pilot cities where uh, where it can work well, how it can work well um, in terms of engaging with the local authorities and with the other vulnerable groups. So I'm 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 really I'm really looking forward to to that. Wonderful. Yeah, I was very much looking forward to and also to the cooperation with uh, uh, the representative Ilias uh, and uh, Stephen and Carlos uh, from the audience here. These were all uh, very interesting contributions uh, to our work. And uh, really, uh, Jessica, your help in uh, connecting our work with European Union funds is really very uh, high potential. There are so many programs in which uh, this kind of uh, approach uh, could be submitted in the Citizens for Europe, uh, Smart Sustainable Cities, uh, Regional Development Projects, 
really tons of projects could be uh, set up and uh, this is something that's needed uh, on the uh, local level, on the national EU level and also on the global level. So let's build this uh, data and digital innovation infrastructure together and use energy, use voices, use uh, perspectives are essential for us to succeed. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye.